Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be a preview to the Phantoms game this afternoon at 4 o'clock in the afternoon against the Toronto Marlies. Been some traveling for a Phantoms up to Rochester, losing in the shootout last night. I'm going to recap of that game that I'll link at the end of this video. If you want to check that out, please subscribe also down below to keep the channel going and growing. And oddly enough, our ECHL Royals are also playing the Toronto affiliate, the Newfoundland Growlers. So, it is a Toronto all around for a minor league affiliates. But <clears throat> let's get right into previewing this game. The Lehigh Valley Phantoms, of course, did score on the power play last night. But before last night's game, I remember seeing the graphic that they pulled up on the broadcast on AHL TV. We were like a nine point something percent on the power play. Obviously, it's a wee bit. Actually, it probably isn't because we went one for five, if I remember correctly, on the power play. So it probably didn't really change much. But obviously, that's something. The penalty kill has been good. Power play, not so much. That's something that would add to a team that is struggling at times mightily on the 5-on-5. Five five. If you can actually get it going on the power play, that does a absolute um, wonders for your team to be able to kind of get some confidence going and build on something to be able to um, actually try to catch some things going and momentum going on 5-on-5, five five, kind of like how the running game can get momentum going for your team as a whole in football. But when we preview these two games, or two teams, obviously our Phantoms are 0-2-1 and one, um, streak, and the Marlies have won their last two. They're also 6-3 and three in their last 10. Our Phantoms are 3-4-2. and two. So if they're able to win this one, they'll be at least at the 500 mark in regulation. In the last, at that point, then 11 games, obviously. So, that will at least be getting us somewhere. We had a good game in Rochester. They are a team, exactly like their broadcaster said yesterday when playing, their best look like they could have the potential to be one of the better um, AHL teams, but then have the really off moments of time. Yesterday, they didn't have that as much, and the Phantoms were able to stay in a game with them, and then just lost in what it turns into just being a breakaway competition at that point. Um... But the big thing for the Phantoms, but also the Marlies, both of these teams, that's why I'm surprised the goal differential for the Marlies is actually at one and not at a minus, is because they do take a lot of penalties too. They're already at 240 penalty minutes. Now, some of that is because they have some players that have no fear scrapping with people, just like we have Hodgson and other guys on our team, Sonia. But uh, we have 222 penalty minutes, so this is definitely a game that could result in definitely some penalty minutes and some power plays on both sides. Obviously, for the Phantoms, that would be key and pivotal. That's why I brought the power play earlier. I think that's going to be one of the biggest keys to being able to beat a very solid Toronto Marlies team that's 7-4-0-1 so far this season. You're going to have to be, if they're playing undisciplined, and get some penalties like they've been having at times this season. You're going to have to take advantage of those, unlike the Phantoms have done for the most part this season. In terms of points, 10 for the Phantoms, 15 for the Marlies. Goals for 37 for the Phantoms, 39 for the Marlies. Against 38 for the Marlies to 11 higher for the Phantoms, 49. So it's also going to be interesting. I haven't seen anything on who's going to be the starting netminder today since the Phantoms do have a back-to-back. -to -back. Will veteran Pat Nagel get the chance? Who was killing it and absolutely kicking butt in the minors for the Royals? Or will they give it back to Felix Sandstrom, who obviously has been a very solid netminder for us? And yesterday, none of those goals. Goalies can allow four goal games and have none of them really potentially be on them. And that was really what happened in yesterday's game. The Rochester Americans scored a bunch of good goals yesterday, and that happens. Murray had good ones. Paterka had good ones. And, of course, a breakaway goal um, is not going to be on the goaltender when you just let a guy get behind the defense. But this has been a preview to the game against the Toronto Marlies. The Phantoms, the biggest key, as I said, is going to be getting the power play going since the Marlies do take penalties. The penalty minutes are very high already at 240 on the season. The Phantoms are obviously right there behind them, so they would have to play counterbalance and play a actual more disciplined game themselves and then be able to finally take advantage of the power play and get goal. Obviously, Frost did get one yesterday. And he would be the player to highlight to continue to always watch for the Phantom. But also Zamula and Cam York, as well as Logan Day, because he's just, like I said, 
in the recap of yesterday's game, a steady Eddie guy that doesn't get enough credit because he does all the small things right, and that's not always as noticeable as guys like Cam York and Igor Zamora, who obviously do a bunch of more well-rounded, kind of like the sexy play type things, making good moves in the offensive zone, having an absolute cannon of a shot, and et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to the Toronto Marlies, um, key pieces you're going to want to really look out for on their team are definitely going to be Anderson, also Abramoff, um, and then I'm not even going to try to say his name, so I just call him Semyon, um, the little center that's a pesky center at 5'11", 161, um, Semyon Durr, and then he has, like, he's always a hard-to-pronounce name, but watching him on AHL TV and some of their games, he definitely looks like one of those pesky or smaller guys. They also, of course, have former Phantom and Flyers product Curtis Gabriel, who is going to be back playing against the Phantom, so it'll be interesting to see how he does against his former team. So obviously that'll be a player to watch. And then Hosang is a solid player as well. So those will be some people to watch. Obviously a former player coming back is always a guy to watch. But again, key is going to be the power play in this game. And it is going to be the Phantoms playing pretty much. That's why I said that it was good to take from yesterday's game. Playing kind of like how they did yesterday where they never let anything phase them and they kept the push coming in the game. You're going to have to do that against this Marley's team too. You can't let anything phase you. And you're going to have to just keep responding to whatever comes at you, just like they did against the Rochester Americans. That's easier said than done, since there's been a decent bit of traveling for the Phantoms of late. But I think if the Phantoms can play similarly to they did yesterday, they could at least escape with, again, one point out of this game, getting the OT against a very good Marlies team. So peace out, everybody. Stay safe and go Phantoms.